So without further ado, I'd like to hand over to to the uh, to the Boston boys. Thanks very much, guys. Thanks, Chris. Um, good to be here and uh, excited to uh, kind of take on this next next presentation uh, slot. So uh, I'm just going to get go ahead and uh, get, get set up here and uh, we can get started. Hello, everybody. <coughs> Andrew here as well. OK. Chris, can we see uh, can we see the screen? Yeah, loud and clear. Fantastic. Well, uh, good morning uh, or good afternoon, everyone, uh, depending on where you, where you're located. And welcome to this next session on Boston's uh, HBC Roadshow, focusing on green energy and more specifically, you know, how is the data center uh, driving green energy? And can potentially be, you know, leveraged in in the future uh, to be a potentially an energy provider and energy source. To kind of kick us off for a bit of perspective, um, I think we're all very aware that the data center is one of the the biggest consumers of energy on on the planet. Um, with the kind of exponential growth of IT over the last few decades. You know, we've seen uh, those numbers really jump. And just to kind of put that into kind of some some numbers or some perspective, you know, typical large data centers across the world, you know, require more than 100 megawatts of, of power capacity, which is actually enough to power over 80,000 uh, households. And this was in the, in, in the US. So just kind of puts it in perspective. Um, that a single data center can consume a total amount of energy to power over, or, you know, almost almost 100,000 homes, and that's a that's a lot of electricity bills that uh, a data center could uh, potentially uh, provide provide for. And you know, in in 2018, you know, it was stated that kind of global data centers um, across the world combined consumed over 205 terawatt hours. Of, of energy, which is the equivalent of 1% of the global electricity, electricity, electricity use across the, across the world, which is um, not an insignificant amount of, en of energy. Uh, let's just put, let's just put it that way. And so kind of as we're kind of showing here in these couple of uh, charts in, in graphs in 2010, you know, data center data centers worldwide were consuming 350 terawatts of electricity, and they kind of have a it split out into best case scenario, worst case scenario, and expected um, use of of energy, kind of going out to 20 2030. And as you can see, that 350 watts is quickly going to dissipate in their best case, in their expected scenario up to around 2,967. Um, and in worst case scenario, you know, um, kind of two or three, almost three times that amount. And what is the what is the culprits? Who 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 is consuming most of the energy inside our data centers? And from the chart on the right, you can see that servers are, are the main culprit, and and storage as well, along with along with network. But I'd like to point out for the sake of this session that um cooling and air conditioning of the data centers make up around 40 percent of the overall data center energy consumption and that's something that we wanted to focus on you know for today's session in in perspective of how the data center can be utilized you know as an energy provider and not just a massive energy consumer You know, as this roadshow is themed on kind of HPC, HPC has um, driven a lot of um, behaviors, you know, inside inside the data center because of its extreme focus on performance. And as we all know, all the vendors producing all of our the next generation CPUs um, 
are all producing hardware that is extremely more powerful and is running hotter than ever before. And TDPs are, are climbing higher and higher as the density um, is increased at all levels of the, of, the, of the stack. And the second thing is that data centers have been focused on is, okay, how do we increase our efficiency and how do we drive down costs? And finally, sustainability. So I look at sustainability from a data center perspective in a couple of different ways. Sustainability, sustainability in, the, in, shall we say, the energy sources that are consumed. So can data centers consume energy from renewable sources such as solar or hydropower, right? Um, those types of energy sources. Um, and, you know, I think it's, um, I think it's very pertinent that we, you know, we point, we point out that, you know, sustainability of our, of our planet, you know, relies on kind of the world kind of pulling together and industries pulling together to find out, you know, um, ways that they can reduce their, their footprint and create renewable sources of energy and recycle, you know, wherever, wherever possible. So kind of come, which comes back to our question, can um, data centers become, you know, energy suppliers? And um, Andrew, I think you had some very interesting kind of insights as to, you know, how um, kind of the waste it wasted energy from the call the cooling and uh, of all the air based systems you know could be you know repurposed and reused but then um now we're seeing the emergence of other types of cooling uh, scenarios that that are now coming becoming more mainstream um in terms of full immersion or partial immersion type 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 solutions and how they offer real potential um real opportunities for for us um, in the kind of data center in IT and HPC industry to start to repurpose that uh, that heat and that energy, yeah, would you yeah. would you agree, Andrew? Yeah, that, that's right. I mean, it's quite interesting because when you have uh, uh, a, a your data center um, and you can, uh, if you can efficiently take the heat out of out of it, um, there are ways to actually make that more efficient. As as the uh, TDP of your of your uh, data center becomes higher and higher and higher. You reach a point where air isn't going to do it alone. Um, you have to use other other novel technologies such as immersion cooling. Now, immersion cooling is pretty much based on the fact that uh, if you have uh, a liquid, um, its specific heat capacity, you know, its ability to absorb the heat is at least uh, 1,200, 1,400 times more than air, and also creates uh, an opportunity to uh, move the heat around in a very controlled way where you can got al alternatives so that you don't even need to actually cool the data center, which is, which is a very uh, cool thing for want of a better word. In other words, in other words, you could have a data center that's warm and you will be able to use the waste heat and purpose it in useful ways. Now, this is not just for cold climates. It's also cold and hot climates, believe it or not. You can take that heat out you can stage up the heat in different levels of energy uh, with heat pumps uh, and the like to either distribute the heat for a local heating area or put heat where it needs to be. You can also use it for cooling, especially in a hot climate. You can use the, the amped up heat uh, in things like absorption coolers. So ironically, you can use the waste heat to cool something, which is very counterintuitive. But um, the money that would save on the likes of air conditioning, uh, especially when it's integrated into a town or a, or a village, um, would actually be very advantageous to the community that's around there. They get nice uh, high performance computation as and when they need it, and uh, they can just run things a little bit cooler. And it goes further than that, because that heat uh, distribution, there are many technologies involved with heat pumps where you can create hot and cold circuits. So then you can take the energy story even further within a town or a city. So for instance, you might have a, a bakery next door to a, um, uh, somewhere that cools things, so refrigeration or a meat locker or something like that. And you can actually move the energy from one place to another, all part off the back of it. Who would have thought that the data center could be used for those types of things. So um, uh, that's basically uh, the kind of 
target for a lot. And as you know from previous uh, chats and podcasts we've had with Taylor, um, this is kind of where a lot of this smart energy is going. It, it's just um, basically you've, you've got this energy and you use it to uh, for your for your needs and for the betterment of everyone. Yeah, absolutely. I think we're going through a bit of a paradigm shift in terms yeah. of everyone's viewpoint on the potential um, of data center energy reuse, re reuse. And then that calls into question, you know, their actual locations. And, and obviously we've spoken before about, you know, the emergence and adoption of, of edge of edge computing, right? And edge DCs, micro DCs, right? And their locations and where potentially they could be located in, in urban commuted communities. And the energy that they um, emit can then be repurposed and reused um, to benefit uh, those those communities, those those housing estates, uh, depending on where, where the location. Um, I think it's just now, um, you know, there's a, a, a kind of a worldwide, um, you know, initiative to look at all, all the areas where A, we're consuming energy and we're uh, emitting and wasting energy to, to where we can, wherever we can repurpose and reuse that. And these things such as data centers, which you would normally put far, you know, far from civilization, you know, in, in many cases, because they're not the prettiest, the, not the prettiest of things. That's that not. is also, that is also changing, right? Um, that, that they can be very much, the viewpoint can be very much changed in the sense that um, they can be now viewed as a producer rather than just a consumer. And I think um, one of the areas that, um, you know, we're, we're seeing that happen is, is in the Nordics. Um, Stockholm is, is one of the leading um, air kind of areas that is, uh, you know, pioneering this. Um, you know, I think it, it, it's, it's been noted that in 2016, you know, Sweden kind of cut tax on electricity use in all data centers by up to 97%. To kind of encourage um, new data, you know, data centers to um, start to contribute to the national grid and start to really push into this whole area of recycled energy, and you know, today they have you know, 30 plus data centers that are already utilizing their uh, their recycled energy or utilizing their emitted waste heat, you know and they have that plugged into their local district heating network. And I think that is a, is a real uh, scenario that I think a lot of other um, countries and nations should should look at and start to focus on because the technology is there, right? The technology is is here, um, which we'll talk about a little bit more in, in depth, um, but the technology is here to enable that and um, they have one facility, a five megawatt facility, you know, that they have in the Stockholm data park, you know, that they hope will supply potentially up to 10% of the of the city's uh, heating needs. Um, I mean, that's a that's a very big chunk of of energy consumption. Yeah, it's unbelievable. And also, this actually fits with the uh, um, with the edge computing narrative as well. Because you need high, high performance computation um, with like so 5G networks that we've discussed before as well. Um, when you, if you, if you actually break these down into smaller data centers, you might think of them as smaller heat management uh, centers as well as allowing to people to use their phones and their cards. Um, so it's part of a of a larger story, a larger narrative. Um, and uh, if you look at this particular picture of this data center, it doesn't quite look like a data center that you would normally expect no absolutely not it's more of a it's more of a, a part of, of of the area part of the community which is a i personally think is a wonderful thing yeah absolutely um i think the the reinvention or uh, of of the data center in terms of yes it has you know it equipment in there and it's it's there to serve uh, the function and process data and and host applications and so on and so forth but um, you know, could could it be uh, you know also uh, part of the more in in shall we say um, 
in, ingrained into the um, fabric of society, right? And be yeah. used for for more community use cases. You know, office space is obviously a natural one that's not that's been done before. Uh, but could a could a community center occupy space next to a data center, right? Mm. And be, and benefit from the energy, you know, that's being able to be recycled from it. And like later on, you know, we talk about um, here in the UK um, that a lot of the uh, universities, you know, a lot of the major universities who are HPC users are uh, plugged into district heating uh, networks. Um, and that obviously presents a, an opportunity for them uh, to recycle their energy and put it into uh, those networks. Um, but just for the sake of, of kind of looking at the cooling technology landscape um, in terms of this 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 session, um, you know, as you said, you know, air has reached you know its limitations. Correct. Yeah, uh, as as you as your chips run hotter and hotter, they can't take that heat away. Um, you have to use some other means to move it. No matter what anyone says, you literally cannot blow the air over these over these machines quick enough to actually extract the heat. So you need to start thinking about why am I using air? And um, as I said before, you've got at least 12, 1400 times more efficiency as you move the energy. And being liquid, um, you can even just use basic convection, which means that rather than being a big noisy data center that, that's running hot and it's got massive coolers on it, just belching the, the waste heat out into the air, you can repurpose it. Um, but it's actually got a few other benefits as well. You, you, you take your circuit boards, you immerse them in a, what they call a like single phase or two phase, what's called dielectric fluid, which is basically a big bath of um, food safe oil, really. And um, when you put them in there, your boards have more even temperature across them. So the boards last longer. So not only are you reusing energy for heat or for cold, um, you've got a potential, uh, assuming that you've got a given performance profile of your of your circuits and stuff like that, longer life cycles means you can also run them hotter. And you can run them hotter without the risk of them exploding or, or whatnot, because um, the temperature distribution is much more even. Obviously, there are challenges. Obviously, a heat sink uh, immersed in a liquid is not going to be quite the same as the one that's, that is for air, because obviously the different densities are involved and there's some circuit design that's required. But in terms of running your data center so it's a lot smaller, um, also comes into play. I mean, uh, even now, there's nothing to stop you running what would be regarded as a few years ago a supercomputer in something the size of a garage or integrating it into um, the basement of a, of a new build of flats. It's, it's all possible. Uh, you have a nice big block of flats and you've got your data center at the bottom, which is serving people and also um, keeping everyone cool. So, for instance, that's just yeah. quite, or, or, and, and hot water for the showers, cold water for your drinks, the whole lot. So it's, it's an incredible integrated solution. It's a great point. Um, one of the big one of the big benefits of of this kind of move to um, exploit the benefits of full immersion is obviously the impact on the the noise factor right it's no oh, so yeah it's it's no longer this big noisy data this big noisy data center um you know i think we all ver have been in data centers before and they are loud they are very they're very very loud and uh, it's not a pleasant place to be um and you know but now with the with the immersion technologies out there it's it's com it's completely the opposite, right? You could 100% put one of, um, shall we say, these immersed containers, you know, into the basement of a block of flats, and you would absolutely never know it's there. Yeah, but also you can put these things where there's power generation, for instance. I mean, there, there are a lot of advantages to do with managing energy near where the sources are. Yeah. You know, the um, sort of the uh, well, maybe not for the sun, which can be a little bit more predictable depending where you've got it. Uh, you know, energy transmission, but also the management of energy uh, for things like wind or uh, wind turbines or uh, uh, waveforms and stuff like that. Um, they can be put as an, an integrated part of, of an energy solution. You know, you're supplying compute and electricity. 
and it's been uh, dealt with at source. Um, but I quite like the idea of you know someone's house or whatever, and they've got their little backyard somewhere, and there's a supercomputer sat there. And nobody knows it's there, and it's just got a nice, uh, you know, it's got a table on there, and you can sit down and have a little look around and stuff like that. And underneath, underneath you is this uh, very powerful computer that's utterly silent, um, which is I think is uh, makes it much more acceptable for that to be just part of people's daily lives, which over time may, may become the case. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, I think you're right. I think we're going to see, you know, we're, we're seeing a, a lot of interest, you know, in um, data center providers um, and, and companies around the world, uh, especially our you know, customers that we're dealing with, um, looking at full immersion very seriously in terms of bringing it into their um, data center roadmaps and starting to look at how, ways that they can start to adopt it, um, POC it, and prove out its prove out its benefits, right? Because you know it has many different factors that you could that, that bring into it. its kind of overall um, benefits, shall shall we say, in terms of being able to run, you know, hotter IT equipment, um, reduced actual um, uh, consumption of energy to actually you know run it, and then the quite you know obviously the fact that it can it's complete silent. Um, solution, as well as you know the fact that this energy now that it emits um, can now be reused and uh, and, re and, re and repurposed, and it ticks a lot of boxes and for a lot of large you know large and medium small medium large firms that are looking to move you know their IT practices into more uh, greener greener ways, mm. and. You know, and just we've touched on this a fair bit in terms of the key kind of key drivers around full full liquid immersion um, being, you know, big one being the energy cost, right? To actually run data centers, to run HPC clusters, you know, are are not going are not going down, right? I think. Um, um, you know, Germany has what some of the highest uh, energy costs, you know, around around the globe, right? And everyone is is looking for ways to bring down their overall operational cost, right? Because it is, is is literally, you know, an operational cost, and to again bring down their overall data center PoE uh, as low as they, they can possibly uh, get it, you know. Uh, and there's a lot of governments out there. Um, especially in places like the Netherlands that are providing, you know, um, tax benefits and 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 special funding for these types of green green initiatives, and are also leading the way in terms of where actually can data centers now live in urban city environments, right? Due to their kind of new this new perspective of there actually can be a, a an energy provider versus just an energy user. Um, so it's a very exciting time, um, and I mentioned this, and I mentioned this before, um, around the uh, kind of the UK uh, universities. You know, there's around 31 universities campuses, you know, around the UK that are very much plugged into the district heating systems, and pretty much, um, you know, a lot of them will be using HPC um, either on prem. Um, most likely in some way, shape or form, um, some more, some more than others, depending on the departments, but they all have the, um, you know, opportunity to leverage something like immersed uh, cooling for their HPC clusters and to potentially um, reuse that energy and reuse that heat uh, for their own kind of district heating systems and to kind of make those make those contributions. So you can you can imagine you know, if 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 these 31 universities, you know, adopted, you know, this this approach um, to their HPC uh, practices, then um, you know the impact would be would be pretty would be felt pretty widespread, right? And quite, quite, um, quite positive, yeah, absolutely. It, it's a yeah, it's it's quite a big thing, and you know, it's not just the UK doing this as well. I mean, you've got uh, in Vienna, you've got the Vienna supercomputers that have been using. A repurposing of, of waste energy for for a, a long time, 
And, um, you know, they're starting to seriously embrace uh, immersion techniques. And um, hopefully our, you know, modern age, uh, well thought through building um, and planning that's used for flats and stuff, uh, maybe they'll start adopting this, assuming that uh, the incentives work. But actually in the UK, for instance, there are insert, uh, incentives for um, reusing the heat in, in effective ways. Uh, rather than just have a, an HVAC on the roof making a lot of noise and just throwing all that free energy into the air and basically warming up the climate is just not necessary. So, um, you know, people are starting to think like that. But I suppose the problem is it's such a it's such a, a hard thing to get your head around until you actually see an example uh, and actually see it in action. And when you see the whole ecosystem, as it were, the target, it becomes a lot more obvious for people to see. And I think this educational aspect of it, I think, is critical um, because um, this is where it's going to go, basically, without almost without any, uh, any, um, you know, it seems quite obvious when you look at it. But to put the pieces together into this uh, tapestry and see that holistically, it's, um, it's not the easiest p thing to communicate. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think you're absolutely right there. Seeing is definitely believing when it comes to this this type of technology and being able to properly understand its total impact, right? And doing some some impact analysis, uh, you know, on your own infrastructure and your own HPC setup on how, you know, full immersion could positively impact not only the your the, you know the clusters and future clusters that you'll run, but your business as a whole, um, and how could this help you kind of um, accelerate um, your organization's path to um, consuming and recycling um, and introducing more uh, and greener and more efficient uh, ways uh, of of cooling uh, IT equipment going forward. So I think we'll. Um, for, for today's session, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of leave it there, but I wanted to kind of open it up to, um, uh, to, to kind of questions. If anybody on, on the line has any questions, we'll be um, happy, to, happy to take those.